is a writing that describes Jesus' trial and execution and his descent into hell. It is called the Gospel of Nicodemus. Prepare to receive Jesus of Nazareth himself, who boasted that he was the Son of God and yet was a man afraid of death, and said, My soul is sorrowful even to death. It's one of those texts that people have known and have been reading for really quite a long time. It ran into some difficulty with the Protestant reformers, in fact, because it was so popular that they went out of their way to try to squelch the gospel of Nicodemus, if you will, and to take it out of circulation. The first part of the book purports to be an eyewitness account of the Savior's trial and execution. It includes criminal charges made by the high priests of the temple that Jesus is not only a dangerous sorcerer, but also Mary's illegitimate child. The first part of the book we can imagine was written in the third or fourth century because we have testimony to it from church fathers from the fourth century. And it speaks of a people who are concerned about their faith because they're being challenged on the basis of who was this figure who you say died and, and was resurrected? Was Jesus not the son of a harlot? Was he not the product of fornication? Um, the, and these sorts of charges that we do know were circulating about Jesus at this time. It is the second part of Nicodemus that tells the story of Jesus' descent into hell. And while Satan and the prince of hell were discoursing each other, on a sudden there was a voice as of thunder and the rushing of winds saying, Lift up your gates, O ye princes, and be ye lift up, O everlasting gates, and the king of glory shall come in. For Nicodemus, the underworld is not the hell we might imagine today, but simply the destination for anyone who dies. In the descent into hell, he tells not only of Jesus going down into hell and setting free the patriarchs we might expect, again, Adam, Isaiah, Abraham, but also of having set free some people who are walking around. It's not a place of suffering. It's the place where the virtuous dead of the Old Testament, the prophets, somebody like Isaiah, where are they? They're not in hell. They're down there sleeping. And so the idea is that Jesus goes down and brings with him all the righteous who have died before him, especially the martyrs. And it's a very beautiful mythological idea, but the resurrection is a sort of a communal event to restore justice where injustice has been practiced. Some fourth century church leaders believed this gospel was personally written by Nicodemus. Nicodemus, as a matter of fact, a Greek word, for one who is victorious for the people was, according to scripture, called a ruler of the Jews, meaning that he occupied a seat in the supreme Jewish council called the Sanhedrin. He was certainly a follower of Jesus. Others claim the Gospel of Nicodemus was a forgery. They believed that well-meaning Christian writers literally created documents meant to gain converts by impressing them with the Savior's power over Satan. I don't think it intends to deceive anyone because when it appeared, people would have known where has it been for the last few hundred years. So it's simply a way of telling the story of the passion of Jesus, adding in all sorts of edifying details. Even though the book was not included in the Christian canon, it exerted a profound influence on Christianity. Perhaps part of the reason was its telling of Jesus' final journey to the cross. The fact that Luke does not mention Jesus meeting his mother on the way towards the cross uh, really probably disturbed some of these early uh, communities, and they wanted Mary to be there. So a creative genius within the community, if you consider these writings to be done by a genius, put her in there. And then, of course, this eventually develops into the Stations of the Cross much later. And that would be an important one on the way to the cross because of the mention of the holy women. We know that in the 5th century in Jerusalem, pilgrims stopped at the place where they believed Pilate's trial of Jesus had occurred. And there's some thought that that may, in fact, be connected to this book, to the Gospel of Nicodemus. 
why was the Gospel of Nicodemus not included in the Holy Bible? Well, the Gospel of Nicodemus didn't make the cut into the canon for a couple of different reasons. First of all, the second half probably wasn't written prior to the creation of the canon, the, the descent into hell part. The first half, the story of the trial of Jesus, also doesn't seem to have been discussed that much in the third and fourth century by the sorts of people who were putting together canons. Probably because they saw it as very new, very recent, and therefore not even worthy of serious discussion for inclusion in the canon. This is another case of a book being written too late, in a sense. You know that this story can't possibly be true. It's a corroboration of all of these other stories that are on the ground at the time. This can't possibly be a story that's written by an eyewitness. So in a sense, this is not a valid resource. It is also possible that a story of Jesus in the underworld was too speculative or too disturbing for early Christian leaders. But why was this story so important to many early Christians? This is an important story partially because you have certain parts of the Christian community saying, there is no hell. Hell doesn't exist. Hell is like the state that you live in. Perhaps the Gospel of Nicodemus was popular in early Christianity because it suggested that heaven and hell exist here and now on earth. It is a holy tradition of the church to say that Jesus descended into the pit of despair, into the pit of darkness. Because what is hell? Hell is distance from God. Hell is being outside of the light and the love of God. Next, an apocalyptic writing that almost became the final chapter in the New Testament.